Hi everyone. Well, can you believe it? We have almost made it. It's Christmas Eve, Eve, and it's here. Christmas is basically here. And I find that there are about two types of people at this time of year. We have those who had their Christmas presents ready on December 1st and they've been under the tree and wrapped since then. And then there are the people who will probably watch this on replay because they are out scrambling to get those last minute presents right now as we speak. But wherever you are, it's almost Christmas and it's an incredible time of year. And I love this time of year. And growing up over the years, I realized that as much as I loved Christmas Day, Christmas Eve was actually my favorite day of the year. And here's why. There's this, there's this anticipation on Christmas Eve that on Christmas Day, it turns into joyful celebration, but then it fades. And on Christmas Eve, we get that opportunity to sit in the anticipation and the hope of the coming of Jesus. And I'm sure that your family has all sorts of different traditions that they do on Christmas Eve. For my family, we had lots of different traditions. On Christmas Eve, we would get dressed up, we'd go to our church services for the candle lighting, and then we'd come home we get into our pajamas, we have this amazing dinner, and we turn all of the lights out. We would turn the Christmas tree lights on, and we'd sit around the Christmas tree as we ate dinner, and we'd play I Spy with the different Christmas ornaments, and just sit in that quiet, still darkness. And then my favorite part, was that we'd load up into the car after everyone was done with dinner. We'd bring some hot chocolate, some pillows, some blankets, and we'd drive around our neighborhood to look at all of the Christmas lights. I'm sure your family has done the same. But we'd look around and we'd see the houses with lots of lights and the houses with little lights. But the other thing that was so beautiful on Christmas Eve, where I grew up, my town had this tradition of doing this thing called luminaries. And the luminaries were these white paper bags. You'd put some sand at the bottom, you'd put a candle in the middle, and you'd line them all the way down the street at the front of your yard. And at night, we'd light them and they would just glow in the darkness. And yet, the promise of the Messiah shines this bright light that their Savior is coming and God has not left them to darkness. So I'm going to spare you my singing voice, and instead I want to read you the first verse from this hymn. It says, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear." Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And I love this hymn because it doesn't shy away from the darkness that Israel found themselves in, the lonely exile that they're in. 
And this name, I'm sure you know, the name Emmanuel for God, it means God with us. And so this song is this cry from the bottom of their hearts that they would be able to have a light shine into their darkness, that someone would come and point the way to their Messiah, to Jesus. And it, it, this song also reminds me of the prophecy in Isaiah 9 that says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For unto us a child has been born, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And I love this passage and this song remind us that in the darkest of nights, even like the darkness of Christmas Eve reminds us that God's light will shine and that God is strong and powerful to save. Finally, the chorus of the song, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. The chorus reminds us that there is joy to come. Just like on Christmas Eve, we wait in anticipation of Christmas Day when the birth of our Savior will come and rescue us, we too can remember now that wherever you might find yourself in the year of 2020 that has been such a whirlwind, lonely, frightening, confusing, anxiety-inducing, that even in this year, that God is Emmanuel and God is with us. And not only that, but that God is coming again, that Jesus will come in power and will establish his kingdom. And so the last thing I want to say about this Christmas hymn is that as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, perhaps it isn't so much a cry for God to come and rescue us from whatever situation we find ourselves in, but perhaps it's a reminder to us that Emmanuel, God is with us, even in the darkness, even in the loneliness, even in our struggles. And so my hope and my prayer this Christmas Eve season is that you too will learn to sing this hymn, to remind yourself that God is with us, that God is strong to save, and that God's light is powerful enough to shine into the darkness that you find yourself in this Christmas season. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, for the light that shined into the darkness so many years ago. God, we thank you that Jesus' light will shine again when he comes in power to establish his kingdom. God, make us ready. Give us hope. Give us anticipation of your coming, that we would be people of the light empowered to go out and shine your light into the darkest places in our world and that we would never lose hope because you are Emmanuel, God with us.